This is the Lions Unchained podcast, where the shackles of your mind are broken. It's not for the faint-hearted, but the chosen few who've embraced the call to leadership, dare to venture where others will not, and believe in God's supernatural power. Join Carl Joseph now for a life-changing word. Get ready to be unleashed into your destiny. No other religion is as litigious as Scientology. They have been plaintiffs in an enormous amount of lawsuits compared with most churches. Scientology is a false religion by biblical teachings. It has its own scripture, it holds a worldview, and seeks spiritual enlightenment. Whenever a religion strays from the biblical outline of God's plan of salvation, as shown in the Bible, then it enters the realm of being labeled a cult, and Scientology is most assuredly a cult, my friend, by the purest definition. Ron L. Hubbard was a popular science fiction writer of the 1930s and 40s, but he made a statement at a New Jersey science convention that made people curious of his real intentions, and I quote, Writing for a penny a word is ridiculous. If a man really wanted to make a million dollars, the best way would be to start his own religion, unquote. And that, my friend, is what old Ron did. He started a religion. He made it up, and he treated it as merely another science fiction project. The following year, in May 1950, Hubbard released Dianetics, a modern science of mental health, which has become entry-level reading for converts to Scientology. Hubbard's overnight success with Dianetics virtually gave him a new career in writing self-help and religious books. Dianetics means through thought or through the soul. His first book on Scientology was published in 1951 and the Church of Scientology of California was incorporated on February 18, 1954. Worldwide estimates of followers of Scientology range from 6 million to 300 million and the truth is no one really knows how many there are. There are probably about 25,000 in this country at least, and climbing. That's one Scientologist for every 12,000 Americans. So in terms of its saturation, it's not as prolific as other cults. Now, Ron Hubbard was raised on a small ranch near Helena, Montana, a town that had four churches, but his later criticism of Christianity betrays his virtually faithless upbringing. Ron made many claims that he was a worldwide traveler, but these claims have been contested by numerous books. Even Hubbard's academic degrees have come under close scrutiny also, since one of his alma maters, which was Sequoia University, was later discovered to be an unrecognized diploma mill located in a two-story house in Los Angeles. It was closed down in 1958 by an act of the California legislature. Now, the success of Ron Hubbard's writing skills cannot be argued. The manuscript for Dianetics was supposedly completed in just three weeks' time. Those who knew him said he could type 90 words a minute, the two-old-finger method. But does this qualify the man to be a prophet of a new religion, on which to risk your very soul for the rest of eternity, my friend? I don't think so. Ron's first two marriages ended swiftly. His second wife, Sarah Northrup Hubbard, uh, had allegations that contained many things in addition to bigamy charges. She claimed sleep deprivation, beating, strangulation, kidnapping of their child, and fleeing to Cuba, and Ron even counseled her to commit suicide at one point, quote, if she really loved him, unquote. Sarah had met Hubbard through a Pasadena-based occult group led by the famous Jack Parsons of JPL Laboratories, who was a disciple of the late, you guessed it, Alistair Crowley, whose alias was The Beast 666. Crowley was a leading Satanist, sorcerer, and black magician. He founded the OTO, or Ordo Templi Orientis, and he was no doubt qualified to be Harry Potter's lost uncle, by all accounts. Regardless of what Alistair called himself, he has now met the real beast in hell, and that would be his old boss, Satan. One thing is for sure, if you make a bargain to serve the devil in exchange for mercy or riches, you won't find it. He is a liar and the father of lies. It is God who has the power to cast men into hell, not Satan. Hell was created for the devil and demon forces in the first place, and man goes there as an intruder. 
Scientology bizarrely defends Hubbard's connection to the Parsons Black Magic cult by stating that he went undercover to infiltrate it on the orders of naval intelligence. For years, the Church of Scientology argues it has long been oppressed by the American government. But guess what? No record has ever been produced to prove that naval intelligence hired Hubbard for such an operation. Whether the Scientologist leaders of today wish to acknowledge the truth or not, there was a connection between Hubbard and the occult. In fact, Hubbard's working knowledge of the occult and black magic satisfied Parsons. In one letter, Jack Parsons wrote to Alistair Crowley, Jack speaks highly of Ron's knowledge of ritualistic black magic. Some have even gone as far as to speculate that Alistair Crowley was potentially grooming Parsons and or Hubbard as potential successors for his OTO organization. The Bible, of course, condemns occult practices as abominable in Deuteronomy 18, verses 9 through 12. Hubbard was also married a third time, which lasted the rest of his lifetime. Mary Sue Whip captivated worldwide attention in 1977 when she masterminded a sinister covert operation against various levels of the U.S. government that could rival any spy novel. Hubbard spent his final years in isolation from the public eye. Top Scientologists at the time isolated him from his family and church members until he died of a stroke in 1986. Scientologists, of course, claim that Ron didn't die. They said he merely discarded his body to move on to the next level of research outside of his body. How this new research would become available to the planet Earth remains unsaid. Now let's get to the teachings of Scientology itself. Hubbard originally posited in his writings that mankind is basically good, which is in complete contradiction to what the Bible teaches. He claimed that the basic instinct for all people is survival, which has some merits, but man's environmental conditions and painful experiences result in his failure, according to Ron. So instead of blaming our decrepit sinful condition on ourselves as he should have done, he blamed the environment instead. Hubbard believed that if a man changes his circumstances and eliminates pain altogether, then his internal condition improves. Two important factors then, according to Hubbard, are avoiding pain and gaining pleasure. Trouble is, regardless of environment, Ron had not accounted for his fleshly sinful nature that is mutually exclusive of environment. Ron's religion is effectively a science of the mind. It addresses the soul condition of man, but fails to address his fallen nature, which resides in his spirit. The meaning of Scientology is, quote, knowing about knowing or science of knowledge, unquote. Friend, if you know anything about the Gnostics of old, Scientology is nothing but repackaged Gnosticism. It's sold upon the age-old lie of antiquity that man can attain salvation through knowledge, not saving grace through faith, and it shares this premise with other cults. The Church of Scientology bears a cross similar to the historical cross of Christianity, with the exception of four short sunbursts pointing or protruding from its center. Hubbard borrowed the cross from a very ancient Spanish mission in Arizona, a sand casting which was dug up by Ron himself. Ron also claims the discovery of Thetan, which is likened to a man's spirit. This Thetan reincarnates after a man dies and can transform into interplanetary life forms. Once reaching Earth as this Thetan, its goal is freedom, to be released from the cycle of birth and rebirth. So in effect, Scientologists believe in another form of reincarnation. The Bible speaks expressly against reincarnation. In Hebrews 9.27 it says, And it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. We have no pre-existence in other bodies, and we do not come from outer space. One of the goals of those in Scientology is to become an OT, or operating Thetan, who no longer needs his body and can leave it at will in the act of exteriorization. This, my friend, is nothing but old-timey astral projection that real witches have been practicing for millennia. Most people who join the Church of Scientology do so after reading the science fiction novel, Dianetics. They follow with advanced levels and the hope of obtaining, quote, clear, unquote, in one lifetime. The goal is to be clear of all pollutants in the mind, to be clear of all corruptive influences. To be clear, according to them, is to have perfect recall and be able to remember every moment of your life. 
On the 10th of August, 1950, Hubbard rented the Shrine Auditorium in Los Angeles to demonstrate proof that he had, in fact, guided someone to clear status. This lady's name was Miss Sonia Bianca. She was a physics student from Boston. When she was questioned by members of the audience, she could not remember basic physics formulas, nor the color of Hubbard's necktie, which she had seen only moments before. People began to leave the auditorium swiftly after this, as they could clearly see this woman was not at the level that she claimed to be. Friend, the theology of Hubbard is wishy-washy at best. Scientology defines deity in three ways. Supreme being, God, and gods. Members are free to choose their concept of God. The Scientology Catechism states, and I quote, What is the Scientology concept of God? We have no dogma. In Scientology, and each person's concept is different. Each person attains his own certainty as to who God is and exactly what God means to him. The author of the universe exists. How this is symbolized is dictated by your early training and conscience. Unquote. The truth for the individual in Scientology is therefore subjective and existential at best. To quote Hubbard, he said, Know thyself, and the truth shall set you free. Which is in complete contrast to what Christ said. If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. In John 8, verses 31 through 32, Jesus gave an objective standard for truth, and that was himself. Never is man called truth in the Bible, nor is man's inner self. Hubbard also taught that truth is relative to environments, experience, and truth. If truth is relative in Hubbard's thinking, then he can apparently justify holding two opposing propositions without contradiction. Therefore, they can become God and many gods simultaneously according to their creed. Hubbard also believed that some of the maladies that man battles with can be traced back to their former lives within the reincarnation cycle. For example, if you smoke, he claimed it's because you got too close to a volcano in your previous life. If you suffer from a fear of falling, it's because you were a sloth in your previous life and still had the memory of falling out of trees. And finally, vegetarians exist today because they got tired of being eaten by animals in their former lives. Many people down the years have left Scientology and written books about the bizarre practices within the organization and the persecution and threats they've received when they've tried to leave it. Famous Scientologists who are mostly actors and actresses today include Kirstie Alley, Ann Archer, Greta Van Susterson, Michael Pina, Kelly Preston, Priscilla Presley, Billy Sheehan, John Travolta, Juliette Lewis, Tom Cruise, Jennifer Aspen, and Edgar Winter, amongst others. Friend, consider these facts and meditate upon them. I ask you to do your own research. We need to pray for those trapped in Scientology that they would come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ our Lord. Unfortunately, this religion concocted by Hubbard is literally straight out of the pages of a science fiction novel. Because that's precisely what it is, pure fantasy. Those who follow the teachings of Scientology may not realize that the founder of their organization based its tenets upon fantasy and not the truth, if only they would choose Christ. It is absolutely imperious that we study the founders of all cults and the actions that led to the formulation of these false teachings that lead men astray into damnation. Friend, we are in danger of losing an entire generation to a cult that has its roots in fantasy and nothing more. I also wish to thank the late Dr. Walter Martin for some of his material which assisted me in compiling this message today. You've been listening to Carl Joseph and the Lions Unchained podcast. Carl is a minister who has witnessed God's miraculous power to save, heal, and deliver. Carl covers topics such as geopolitics, current affairs, cults, societal trends, and end time events, all through a biblical lens. Every Monday, new podcasts are uploaded, so stay tuned for the next opportunity to roar into victory. Check out carljosephministries.com for exciting articles, teachings, and discussion points. See you next week, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button.